In terms of mythical Pokemon, regular old Shaman's known to be pretty bad competitively, as it's literally never used. With its base 100 stats and everything, it does have some pretty good potential though. Its signature move Seed Flare is a 120 base power stab grass move that comes with a 40% chance to drop the opponent's special defense by two stages. But of course, it is also only 85% accurate. We toss on the Choice Specs held item to boost damage by an extra 50%, and this little guy actually does huge damage, along with being actually pretty fast with 100 speed. It has coverage with Earth Power, which is super nice, along with things like Air Slash and Psychic. Its ability Natural Cure can heal status conditions when it switches out, and honestly, I feel like Shaman can surprise some people with what it can do. Alright, look, I like Shaman for a lot of reasons. Most of all, he's just a little guy. And also, in terms of usage, this thing is literally at the very bottom in zero usage. And that just means that it's time for me to show the people that uh, these little hedgehog hands are in fact rated E for everyone. And this thing does have some damage to be dealt. Listen, if you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. More than half the people that have been watching these videos are not subscribed, so go ahead and double check. And with that, let's go ahead and jump into the video. Alright, so I have an opponent here that's got a pretty scary team, and they also have a spider. So this thing is kind of, it's an interesting lead with the Don fan, right? Because most of the time this thing's going to set up Sticky Web. So I'm thinking to myself, they're going to go Sticky Web, I can rapid spin them right away, break this thing Sash. Instead, I get a ball of energy right to the trunk. And that definitely does a bunch of damage, breaks my sturdy, and also I rapid spin nothing. So <laughs> that did not really work out for me, and it, you hate to see it. I will say though, I've had this exact lead scenario where that worked out for me. It did doesn't this time, so no rapid spin for me today. I do want to try to conserve the Donphan uh, because it's my only form of getting rid of those sticky webs once they're set up. So I decided to go into the Wigglytuck. Mrs. Puff comes in looking like a happy little marshmallow, and I can take an energy ball at least, kinda. So at this point, I decide to go for the flamethrower. I figure I should be able to live a stab attack. A thunder does do just about enough to knock me out, but you can't take care of the Wiggly that easy, baby. I can now Flamethrower, and I actually grab the kill with a crit, but more importantly, we kill the spider who had the potential you know, to set up webs and be annoying, so don't have to worry about that, which is fantastic. And also, as they bring in Arcanine here, one thing to note, Wigglytuff is in range to activate my Custap Berry. Now, I don't want to use it against the Arcanine. This Wigglytuff is here to explode and act like she don't know nobody. But with the Misty Terrain set up with the uh, the Doug Dimmadome, owner of the Dimsdale Dimmadome, I, I kind of plan to try to use a Custap Explosion or Misty Explosion at some point. So I decide to go into this thing just because I know that I can take any physical attack the Arcanine wants to throw at me. It turns out it just barely because it does a bunch of damage anyway. Arcanine is pretty insane. I also find myself in a situation where I'm like, hmm, I mostly just wanted to set up my Misty Terrain and now I don't have anything to really hit this with, but that, that's mostly fine because they decide they want to conserve the Arcanine for later. That thing is going to be a threat and they decide to now go into the Toad School. This thing with his creepy pink noodle legs is going to now have to take a Misty Explosion and that is going to do a lot of damage. Actually, it does pretty much nothing, and uh, even with the 50% boost that I get to my Stab Misty Explosion, oh boy, just shrugged it off like pretty much nothing happened. And also, it does even have some leftovers, so this thing is feeling as healthy as ever, and I'm like, well, well damn. So that is unfortunate, but at least now I do get a nice little switch initiative and decide to match up against this thing. So I decided to go into the Salamence just because I know that I can take any attack this thing wants to throw at me, and while I am special attacking, I figure a Hurricane and a Flamethrower should be able to do the job. Now, I opt for the Hurricane just because I want to do big boy damage and I get a big boy miss, which is great. I'm, do I'm doing real nice against, <laughs> against this freaking Toad Scroll as they decide to now go for that Leech Seed, which is just going to make my life a whole lot more annoying because now, after the Leftovers and the Leech Seed, this thing's like pretty much chilling at full health. And uh, I probably should have got this damn Salamence's eyesight checked because why? I swear to God, not only do I always miss hurricanes, this thing always seems to miss Draco Meteors, but it is what it is. At this point, I'm like, well, screw it. I'm just going to hurricane again, and I'm going to land this time, and I'm going to get the confusion, and it's going to be nice. But they decide now to switch. They want to conserve uh, the Toad Scroll there. I don't really have great answers for that Toad Scroll, um, but they're going to bring in the Arcanine here as I do hurricane. I do connect this time, but it's on the wrong guy as it doesn't do a whole lot of damage, which uh, is not that big of a deal, as it does sap me with a little bit of seed. Pause. And I do actually, I do want to conserve the Salamence here. It's a good switch in to Arcanine, uh, just because of that intimidate, and I do want to try to conserve the fella. Problem is, 
Do not really have a whole lot that wants to switch into Arcanine. Could potentially go into the Golurk, but even Golurk is going to take uh, a lot of damage from a potentially Choice Banded Arcanine. So I just decided to go into the OnlyFans, subscribe today, as I just get head smashed. Do actually end up living, but it doesn't really matter because 2 is going to be able to knock me out. Um, but Don Fan, he's the, he's the best chance I have at <laughs> trying to live head smashes. That freaking point on the top of this Arcanine's head really makes those head smashes hurt. But he's actually going to end up switching here, which is... Uh, yeah, they probably just kind of second guess the damage there, as they're actually just going to go right back into the Toad Scroll. Kind of no reason not to go into the Toad Scroll here, as this thing is just a freaking monster. But actually, on the Earthquake, while it's supposed to take it pretty nicely, I do get a crit, which is like, hey, all right, I will take some pr pretty considerable damage there. And uh, Toad Scroll is an interesting mon, right? Because touching the ground, you're immune to Spore with this uh, Misty terrain up, so it can't put me to sleep, but it is fast in that uh, it has a really high base speed. You always just kind of forget because its ability Mycelium Might makes it always go last when clicking Spore. But it is able to just outspeed me here and Earth Power just takes care of the Don Fan. And at this point, it wasn't going to be switching into any more Arcanine and it really was kind of used up. Now, at least the good news is I do get a Revenge Switch. So after some recovery, this thing's chilling at about half health. And I figured, you know what? It's time to bring in, it's time to bring in the Hog. We're about to go Hog Wild out here. And I'll tell you one thing, I hope you ordered Salad, because this little hedge... Dude, Shaman's literally a... It's a hedgehog, and it's also a hedge. I think I just... I literally just realized that while <laughs> recording this. I bring in my hedge, hog, and at this point, Choice Specs Shaman honestly looks pretty good in terms of damage here uh, with just a Seed Flare. So that's what I'm going to decide to go for. I kind of figure they might actually end up switching into the Petrarunt, but they decide to go into the Arcanine. They're thinking, hey, I don't care about no grass. Boom, Seed Flare comes at you fast. That is going to do a bunch of specs damage, and that actually takes care of the Arcanine. So that is actually really clutch for me. I do not have a lot of switch-ins to that, and uh, we got to a pretty a pretty nice little surprise kill there, which is amazing. So good news is that thing's dead. Bad news is this dragon is a problem. I do still have the, you know, the Wigglytuff in the back pocket with that berry. Uh, with Misty Surge gone, it's not going to do as much damage, but still just knowing that the Wigglytuff uh, has the ability to go first with that cust app and a little surprise attack is going to be good for later. But I decide uh, to go into the Golurk here. There's really not a whole lot of options. I, I don't have much. Golurk kind of obviously is threatened by a dark stab move here. And in general, I kind of bring this thing in for a potential sack just to be able to then most likely bring in the Salamence as a revenge killer because I am faster. But this thing has different ideas. Going to go ahead and think some nasty thoughts over there. Nasty plot is wildly unfortunate because now... This thing is going to hit like an absolute truck. The Terra Poison is also annoying. I can't go for the Earth Power with Shaman because of Levitate. And now Golurk surely does <laughs> definitely not live in attack. So the Dark Pulse does take care of our big Clay Fella. And we also see the Life Orb. So this thing has enough damage to kill everything. I was really hoping they didn't Terra so that I could go into the Wigglytuff and then Custap Surprise Attack with the freaking Misty Explosion. But it's not going to end up happening that way. But at least now, at this point, I can go into the Salamence, who... At base 100 speed and a timid nature, I can outspeed this thing, even if it's max speed. And the only thing I can really do is go for the Draco Meteor. Thanks to that Terra, it's not going to be super effective. And it's also not quite going to be enough to knock it out. It is barely able to hang on. And we're just throwing Meteors all willy-nilly out here. So he kills me with his Meteor. And uh, that is wildly unfortunate. But at least I'm, I got base 100s all over the place in terms of speed. Shaman surely can come in here and be able to outrun him. I got little ass stubby hedgehog legs, but somehow I'm faster than a three-headed dragon that has wings. So listen, that's, that's fine by me. I bring in the hedge and we're ready to go go do some hogging. So I can actually go for the psychic, which is, it doesn't really matter. It's just kind of the only thing I can really hit it with. It's the safest option and that does take care of it. So at least we do not get swept by the dragon, but we do have our work cut out for us. They've got a number of scary threats left and I have a freaking, Shaman and also a Wigglytuff who is pretty much dead. So at this point they can go into the Azumarill. Now they know I'm Choice Specs from the damage that I've been able to do. They know I can't Seed Flare here. So the only thing I can really do is go into Wigglytuff for the sack. Now it is unfortunate because I was like, ooh, I'm going to hold on to that Custap Berry range Wigglytuff the entire game. And then now it just ends up coming in and getting roasted like a damn marshmallow at the campfire. The play rough does take care of me. And uh, a play rough miss would have been pretty damn legit there. Doesn't end up happening, but the good news is now Shaman has a chance to pull the game back for us. So I'll break down the situation for you. So they have three Pokemon left, including this Azumarill. They have 
uh, the Petra Runt in the back, along with the Toad Squirrel. So I'm going to lock myself into Seed Flare, and we're just going to start flaring all over the place and try to do pretty much what Shaman does best. So they decide to switch out the Azumarill. Smart plates, definitely huge power over Sap Sipper, which would be hilarious. But as Toad Squirrel comes in, we think this thing is specially defensive. It is able to live the Seed Flare, which is honestly kind of scary, but I at least knock it down to red, and one more does knock it out. Now, the problem with Seed Flare is it's relatively prone to missing. We're sitting at 85 accuracy. Luckily, we do connect on a second one, which does take care of old Squiggly over here. And now we've got two Mons left. There is one very scary one that definitely has the upper hand here, and that is this freaking Berry guy. In comes the Petarunt. And at this point, there is a pretty good chance that Shaman can clutch out this game, even against this Poison type. So here's the thing. I still do have the Terra in the back pocket. Knowing that this thing is going to be able to go for a Malignant Chain or just a Poison move, I cannot afford to take super effective damage, so it's worthwhile to just go for that Terra Water. And I also know that I'm going to be faster to be able to go for the Seed Flare. Now, I know that uh, a Spec Seed Flare is going to do a lot of damage. It's not quite going to do enough, but the secondary effect of Seed Flare is you actually get a harsh drop of their special defense pretty likely. I do actually end up getting that drop, which is insane. Malignant Chain does come through, and they do not get the poison, so I do not get poison puppeteered. And at this point, another Seed Flare connects, and thanks to that special defense drop, it's actually able to kill the Petarunt, which is the most insane thing ever. We got extremely lucky on this Bedef drop, and also them not being able to confuse me with the can also poison. So, now we have a matchup against the Azumarill. All I have to do is outspeed and knock this thing out with a Seed Flare, and I literally win the game. This Azumarill has no chance of living a spec Seed Flare. They do not have a Terra, and I freaking miss. But it is fine. Here's the situation. I'm going to break it down for you. So, Azumarill, his highest damage is going to be Play Rough in this situation, which should not have enough damage to knock me out. On the highest possible damage output, this thing can do, I think, 60% to me. I have just enough to be able to take a play rough, fire off one more seed flare, connect and win the game. So it does not miss the play rough, it does connect, and it ends up knocking me out. Now, <laughs> that the only scenario where that Azumarill wins that game is if it's a choice banned Azumarill, and that means this thing is definitely banded, and that is wildly, wildly unfortunate. The luck was almost on my side until it wasn't, and that's the way she goes. Still a super fun game, and the fact that Shaman almost clawed back from that one was hilarious. But that's going to bring us into the next game here, and this one is another really interesting match. My dude is working with a crazy team, mostly just because they are all Hisuian form Pokemon, and there's some uh, really cool stuff over there. Let's jump into it. So he is going to go ahead and lead off with the Overquill. This thing is looking sharp, and I have a monkey who probably has no business touching this sharp of an object, but... Uh, at this point, Ambipom as a lead can come in, I can fake out and get a little bit of chip damage and then you turn out of here. However, I actually end up getting poison pointed, so I definitely had no reason to touch it, um, but it's not that big of a deal. I'm freaking, I'm a purple monkey anyway. At this point, Ambipom doesn't really live attacks anyway, so a regular poison doesn't really go that long of a way and it, that's kind of fine. It, it does at least tell me what ability this thing's working with. It wasn't Intimidate, so it's not going to be Swift Swim. So I can now just go for a U-turn as I don't have any way to just knock this thing out here. And uh, I get a nice little, little bit of chip damage there with the U-turn, and I decide I don't really know exactly what this thing wants to do, but I don't have the greatest of switch in, so I decide to go into the Don Fan. Main reason why is even though this thing can have uh, some coverage, uh, water coverage with liquidation, it's not going to get stab on it, and I should be able to take it just fine. Turns out they actually go for the Bar Barrage, and I'm like, hey, go ahead and get out of here, Barbara. I get that red card. It's going to draw in a random team member, and it turns out to bring in the worst possible guy for <laughs> Don Fan. It drags in the Basket Legion, who is extremely scary, and at least in this situation, I do have a switch in. So I do have to get the Don Fan out of here as much as I would like to get my hazards up. I do not want to be blasted by a liquidation. So I decide to switch into the Salamence here, mostly just because I can come in on an Intimidate, but also... Uh, liquidation is not going to be very effective. Plus, at minus one, Salamence takes that all day long, flapping his little cardboard-looking wings out here. And uh, at this point, I'm just going to go for a Draco Meteor. It's my highest damage here. I kind of figured they'd switch out, and I miss. Because, of course, I do, which now opens the door for a freaking Ice Fang, which does end up killing me. Now, the Draco Meteor would not have knocked that thing out, but it would have done a nice little amount of chip, and it would have been great to see. However, now I just get Ice Fanged and killed. And that does suck. So Salamence being down is unfortunate, but at least 
it's time to bring in the hog. I go into the hedgehog here, I can outspeed this thing because it doesn't have rain up, and a seed flare is looking pretty good across the board. So, base 100 speed does allow me to uh, outspeed the little guy, and the seed flare flares his ass back to the damn old school river he belongs. So, Basket Legion gone is a pretty good sight to see, as uh, at this point they get a switch into the Hisuian Typhlosion. So, Typhlosion, I don't have a lot of great switch-ins to this. I decide to go into Mag Mortar, and while I know that I can resist like something like an Eruption, I, I can't really hit this thing that hard in return, as uh, they actually end up going for the Heat Wave. I kind of take it nicely, and I'm like, all right, what's, uh, what do I want to do here? I'm just going to basically just go for a Psychic to try to get some chip. I imagine they do switch. That means it's probably going to be Scarf. A lot of the time you see... You know, like a Scarf Typhlosion, which is yeah, fine by me. But they now can bring in the Cleaver. Arguably my favorite Hisuian form. This thing is a monster. And it takes a Psychic, no problem. I swear to God, Magmortar is always a Pokemon that never does as much damage as you would expect. Would expect. I mean, it's a non-stab Psychic, and it, it, it I have a base 125 special attack. It doesn't even do close to half to the Cleaver. So that kind of sucks, but at this point... I do have a couple different switch-ins to the cleaver here. I imagine they probably just stone axe just to go ahead uh, and get their hazards up. It turns out they're actually going to go ahead and bust out the Terra Rock. Not a Terra you see often. I kind of forget that it's just a straight up building on Buddy's head. Uh, but it is going to go ahead and boost that stone axe, give it some extra stab. And luckily Golurk lives in a freaking stone house, so it doesn't do a whole lot to me. And Golurk actually does a pretty good job at checking pretty much everything a cleaver can go for here. So it does set up the stealth rock, also shows that it's going to be life orb. Uh, important to note, it's not Scarf. And uh, here I'm just like, you know what? I love Dynamic Punch Golurk with no guards. So I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go punch and, and actually have the Trailblaze. Bust out the Trailblaze, which gives him a plus one to speed. Luckily, I'm barely able to hang on. Kind of surprised I was able to live that. It's a weak move, but honestly, Cleaver hits pretty damn hard. And luckily for us, a Dynamic Punch is going to be able to finish this thing off. And uh, down goes the Cleaver. So while it did get up its Stealth Rock, it, uh, it at least is not going to be able to do too much in the long run. And uh, now they get a switch into whatever they like. It's going to be the Hisuian. Freak Everything's Hisuian. I'm just calling this buddy. He's Electro. Brings in the ball. And I have nothing that wants to come in on this. And also Golurk is slow. So I'm like, you know what? You can have it. I just let him Giga Drain me to death. And at least we were able to punch in a dynamic fashion and, and knock out the Cleaver. So now I can go into, into whatever I like. Honestly, Shaman's kind of my best bet here just because... I resist both this thing's stabs, and I do have Earth Power, which is really good coverage for Shaman a lot of the time, just because Steel-type switch-ins. Uh, of course, they're probably not going to be going into a Steel, but I do kind of expect a switch here. I'm kind of thinking maybe they go into Overquill. It's also good for incoming Poison-types. Turns out, actually, they go for the, the little late-game Reflect action. I kind of figured also it was going to be a Light Screen in this situation against the Shaman. Um, but the Reflect, they're probably worried about Ambipom along with Donphan in the back. And now this thing's just throwing curveballs. He's literally a ball. He's throwing himself at it. goes for the Rain Dance. Now, Rain Dance in this situation would be for things like the Basket Legion along with a Swift Swim uh, Overquill. But we did see it was a Poison Point Overquill. So I'm like, oh, okay, this is probably fine. Maybe Buddy's actually working with the wrong ability on the Overquill. But uh, at this point, I do finish that thing off with a, a nice little Earth Power. And now this brings in the Weird Ear. This thing is quite literally weird. He's a deer. And he's weird, and I don't know what the hell this thing's all about. Pretty much, it goes for its move, Psy Shield Bash, which is uh, kind of a, a wild move. But this thing really doesn't have that much offensive po firepower, so they decide to finish off the old one-two punch with the screens. And now they set up the light screen. So we have Reflect and Light Screen currently up. I decided to go into the uh, Magmortar just because I don't really have much else that wants to come in. And Magmortar doesn't do great here. But what I can do is hilariously go for a Solar Beam in the rain just because I have the Power Herb. And uh, a flamethrower wouldn't be doing very much. But behind a light screen, that doesn't do anything to the weirdier, which is hilarious. And then it fires off the earthquake to finish me off, which is, is fine. Again, Magmortar doesn't really have that much a role in this in this ending game. So I'm fine with that as an earthquake does finish me off. Kind of really didn't expect the earthquake on this thing either. I truly, I think I got to bust this thing out sooner or later. It's a weird, it really is a weird Pokemon. But uh, now that opens the door for a free switch. And I'm going to go back into the monkey where... Ambipom can do some pretty good damage. The problem is they do still have that Reflect up. I don't know if this is Light Clay, but uh, I go for the Fake out here just to kind of stall out a little Turneroo and uh, also get a, a little bit of chip damage there. I do take some Poison, but again, it doesn't really matter 
And now the Reflect wears off. So I am free now to go for either a U-turn or a knockoff. A knockoff will be my highest damage. And this thing actually, it ends up living. I also end up, it, it's Shell Bell. I forgot. It, I don't know why Buddy's working with a Shell Bell. This guy's entire squad has me confused. But <laughs> a Psy Shield Bash doesn't quite knock me out. But it's going to put me in range to where the Poison will. And also, the effect of Psy Shield is it does give you a plus one to defense. It's a little too late because we did get some solid chip there. But honestly, this weirder is putting in way more work than I kind of expected it to. And I am down to a pair of Pokemon left. So I opt into going into Donphan just because not only can I take an attack from this thing easily, I can do a little bit of house keeping to use some rapid spin shenanigans, but also I believe there is uh, still a few turns of that light screen, maybe just one. So Shaman needs to be able to get as much damage as possible. So going into Donphan here, he actually goes for the, goes for the lunge, which is funny. It drops my attack one stage. And again, this crazy bearded deer is just throwing weird stuff at me. Now, I get some Stealth Rock up, which will just help for a little bit of chip in the back if Shaman wants to pull through with it. Uh, and uh, also get rid of that Light Screen. So, at this point, they go for the Psy Shield Bash. It is going to give them a plus one to defense. I'm also minus one here. But I decided to go for the Rapid Spin. First of all, thinking that it was going to be able to kill the deer. But it doesn't. But more importantly, I kind of just wanted the plus one to speed. Because that's going to allow... Don Fan 2, outspeed, um, things like that over Quill. So now I can at least just outspeed thanks to that rapid spin. We've spun in a rapid fashion, and down goes the deer. So they've now got two Pokemon left. They are going to end up bringing in the over Quill here, who um, is not swift swimming because there's also no rain. But more importantly, I am going to be faster than this because of that rapid spin. But thanks to that lunge, the minus one attack allows this thing just to barely hang on. I'm like, oh. Shit, but also I kind of thought they were going to go into Typhlosion in the first place, so it didn't really matter. But they also just go now for the Toxic. Maybe they probably expected me to switch into the uh, Shaman, knowing that they wouldn't Barb Barrage in this situation. But the Toxic uh, is at least going to breathe a little bit of life into what Don Fan can do here, because I can outspeed, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna try to finish this damn thing off. I feel like Shaman should have the matchup against the Typhlosion with a little bit of help. So. An Earthquake is going to take care of the Overquill there. The Toxic was um, an interesting play. They, surely they just thought I was going to go Shaman, but uh, like expecting something like a Liquidation. Um, but now down to that final Pokemon. It is going to be all crazy. thing reminds me of one of those like weird anemones with its crazy neck thing. It does have some pretty solid health here, and the Stealth Rock at least is going to chip it down. Um, unfortunately for me, though, an Infernal Parade is going to knock me out. It actually has higher damage. Uh, on an opponent that is uh, inflicted with a status. And me being poisoned just definitely guarantees that that was going to kill. Not that it wouldn't if I wasn't poisoned, but just cool, cool little little move there. Now, we have a situation where it's Shaman versus the world, as uh, their final Pokemon being the Typhlosion, mine being a little grass dude. We seem to have uh, not the upper hand in this spot, but I have conserved my Terra for this situation, and if for whatever reason this thing uh, is not Choice Scarf, it would be still be locked into the Infernal Parade, but a Terra Water is going to guarantee that uh, this thing cannot knock me out with a Fire move, and also if it's not Scarf, I just outspeed anyway. So I go ahead and put the Fountain on the Hedgehog. We're balling out of control out here, looking crazy funny, and uh, I can now just go for that Earth Power. I do outspeed, and that is going to take care of uh, the Typhlosion. So down goes the final Mon. Shaman comes in clutch with that uh, coverage with the Earth Power there, and uh, that's going to be the end of the match. So that one was just definitely weird, and I thought it was just kind of fun. And Shaman is honestly such a fun Pokemon to use that people should be using him more if you're when you're not missing seed flares, I guess. But thank you guys so much for watching. For real, I've been having a lot of fun with these videos, and I'm um, cooking up some new teams and get some shenanigans coming on the way. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.